Good morning, everyone. Today is Thursday, and yeah, I got carrots in my hand. What do you suppose I'm making? Actually, I am going to make what's kind of like a meatloaf, but I'm doing something different. Instead of putting it in a meatloaf pan, I'm gonna be putting them in a muffin pan. And there's some different ingredients in this one. There's carrots, there's onion, which is probably in most meatloafs, and there's clove of garlic, that is. And there is going to be a pound of ground beef, and this particular recipe calls for a pound of ground pork. Well, I don't buy ground pork, so I'm going to use a pound of beef and a pound of ground lamb. So anyways, it also has some tomato sauce in it, some almond meal, egg, and tomato paste, Dijon mustard, apple cider vinegar, salt, oregano, black pepper, and some ketchup to the top. So, how about if we get started on that? So in my handy dandy little chopper here, I have one garlic clove and one onion. So I'm just gonna chop that on up. And I am actually gonna set it with this in my saucepan. I had begun to melt some coconut oil to saute that. And I need to get, sorry about that, had to, had to go and get my spoon. So I'm just gonna put that in here. And then, we are going to take our, some two peeled carrots. They said medium. What does that mean? Isn't that all just perception, you know? What you perceive to be medium, I might perceive to be small, or vice versa, so. Anyways, just gonna chop this up. My, this is a very cheap little chopper, so it's easier on my chopper if I cut them up a little bit. And we will put that in there. And we are going to saute this for about five or seven minutes until they're, it's, they're tender. And we're going to need to cool this down because this is going to go in our meat mixture and we certainly don't want to burn our hands. So I'm going to go do that. Okay, so my, my carrots and my onions are sauteed till they are tender. And I did want to say that this particular recipe calls for two things that I'm gonna substitute. One is fish sauce. I'm not spending the money on fish sauce, which is basically just a type of liquidized anchovies. So, what I'm gonna be substituting is Worcestershire sauce. The other thing is it calls for a tablespoon of tomato paste and a half a cup of tomato puree. Well, this is the size of my can of tomato puree and I am not prepared to open this up for a half a cup. So what I am gonna be doing is I had a small tomato paste and I took out my tablespoon of tomato paste. I put the rest of the can into a jar, added some water, shook it up real good, and this is what I'm going to use for my half cup of tomato puree because I'm just not gonna waste food. And I can't imagine it making that big of a difference in a meatloaf basically, right? <laughs> so anyways, we will see how it goes because you know, I am famous for these wonderful substitutions and then, yeah, sometimes I'm like, oh wow, I think this is better. And then there's other times it's like, uh, no, I should have stayed <laughs> the original recipe. So yeah, my husband's gonna be the guinea pig on this one. So we'll get back to our cooking. Okay, what I do is, 
you know, we, there's always eggs in meatloaf, right? But I add all of my spices, my salt, my pepper, and all that into my egg. That way, it's easier to know that you've absolutely incorporated all, all that into the meatloaf. That's just, my mother taught me that. <laughs> so, you know, old habits die hard. Anyway, so what we're gonna do now is we are going to take a half a cup of almond meal flour. And I'm actually gonna heat this because what I did not realize is that it called for a pound of ground beef and a half a pound of ground pork. And I have a pound of ground beef and a whole pound of ground lamb. So I am going to heat this just a little bit in order to make sure that I have enough, you know, for, for that extra half pound. I am gonna add my substituted tomato puree and my paste, tablespoon of tomato paste, and two teaspoons of Dijon mustard, a teaspoon of apple cider vinegar, I believe we only need to add our eggs into this because what it says to do now is to mix until it's well combined and then we're going to incorporate that vegetable mixture into this. So I'll move a few things here so that we can do that. I did not add my Worcestershire sour sauce, did I? No. I needed a tablespoon of this. I'm substituting this for the fish sauce. I'm really not into salty fish, so we'll see how that works. And I will just go ahead and I will mix this up. Okay, so here's our meat mixture. Here's our cooled vegetables of carrots and onions. And we're just going to go ahead and mix that in there. And I'm just going to incorporate this with my hands, which is actually what I did with the last one, too, because it's just so much easier. And it just says to divide this evenly into our meat cups, or our muffin pan. I'll show you what that looks like. Okay, it says to press gently, but to fill them all the way to the top. So that's what I will do. Well, there we go. And we have extra, but I anticipated that. And I got out, even though it's Christmas one, I got out, I have these little mini loaf pans. I had bought them a couple years ago at Christmas and gave, made, made different kinds of breads in them and gave them away as gifts and kept a couple of these little loaf pans for myself. So I am going to put the rest of that in this little loaf pan and we will have a little mini meatloaf. So I'm going to stick this in a 400 degree oven. I am going to put it on a cookie sheet because I'm anticipating grease. What do you think? It says to cook it for 30 minutes but we are to rotate it halfway through. 30 minutes does not sound like a lot, so I will definitely be using my meat thermometer to make sure that they are done, but I will show you what they look like after a little bit. All right, I tested these and these are done, but the little meatloaf is still in the oven because that is definitely not done. This is our meatloaf, or meat muffins, right? And what you're supposed to do is put some ketchup on the top like frosting and you were it, for kids it said to then have mashed potatoes or mashed cauliflower and you put that on top and it's like a little frosting dollop but 
I'm not going to do that. I'm just making the muffins. Well, my husband totally enjoyed those meat muffins. And I put the little meat loaf in the little pan. I ended up putting that in the freezer because I figured, hey, that's going to be a nice meal for, for us sometime in the future. And I will say this, though. I think that it, it absolutely needed more salt. But I think I should have added more Worcestershire sauce. I don't think that that's probably as strong as what fish sauce would have been. And so it just needed something a little bit more flavorful. And I think that that probably made the difference. But today... I wanted to read from Proverbs 16, verse 24. And I'm going to be reading this from the New Living Translation because the New Living Trans Translation uses the word kind. And it says, Kind words are like honey, sweet to the soul and healthy for the body. You know, there is power in kind words. I'm sure you've heard the old saying, kill him with kindness. Well, I was reminded today the importance of a kind word. And I know that I talked about this two days ago, but this card has been sitting on my dining room table. And it's my dining room table that I do most of my work at with YouTube. It's where I edit my my videos and it's where I usually end up doing my little devotion and so this has been sitting there and I've seen it every day since it was sent to me and you know a card a simple surprise card in the mailbox is sweet encouragement and it was completely unexpected yet it was deeply appreciated. And this is just one example of how God works through individuals to reach others. Thank you again, Kathy. And there is power in the words that we speak. They can build up and they can tear down. There are so many damaging words that people speak. We hear it all the time. Whether you're in the grocery store, you're watching television or the news, so many people just being, I guess, rude and mean. Those are the two words that came to mind. But I think that it's important for those of us who love the Lord Jesus Christ we need to purposely speak more thoughtful and considerate and uplifting words. Words that encourage, words that will promote healing, words that show thanks and appreciation. That every day, if we would show kindness with the words we speak, how would that affect our family and friends, our co-workers? How about the cashier or our fellow shoppers or the stranger that we cross paths with? I would like to see people of faith willing to inspire and become emboldened to make a difference in the world around us. So with that, I want to remind you, life happens. Let's enjoy it. And may each of us choose our words wisely. And don't forget, I am ever so slowly creeping closer to the 300 mark. So if you want to be in, the giveaway, when I reach 300, then make sure that you leave it in the comments that you would like to participate in that, and I'll be sure to put your name in the hat. So, I will talk to you tomorrow. God bless.